Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Christ, the Word, make us worthy to prepare ourselves to celebrate the feast of your miraculous birth. When you reconcile the heights and the depths, fill our hearts with the faith of those holy ones who awaited your coming throughout all generations. May your love and peace reign within us that we may glorify you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with the church and her children. raise glory, honor, and praise to the Ancient of Days, born of the Father before all ages, who at the appointed time took flesh from the Virgin Mary. By his birth he fulfilled the revelation of the Holy Spirit, spoken by the prophets. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. Glory to you, O only Son, you are the hope of the nations, awaited by all generations. You are without beginning or end, Yet at the appointed time you chose to be born as a child. You are the great and mighty one, yet you became man without any change to your divinity. You enrich creation, yet you have become poor, and your mother sang spiritual songs to you as she carried you in her arms. O child, O ancient of days, wrapped in swaddling clothes, the shepherds of Bethlehem and the Magi from the east came to worship you and the angels gather to sing to you. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace. The church throughout the world prepares for your birth with joy and with gladness. Now, O Lord, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to let the light of your face shine upon us as it shone in glory upon the shepherds. Fill our hearts with perfect joy and give an understanding of the mystery of your plan of salvation with all who have prepared to welcome your feast. We gl praise, glorify, and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever.
gathering among us, accept our incense and give us your grace. Protect your flock that awaits your coming and prepares for your birth. Have mercy upon us and upon our departed, that we may be worthy to enter into your kingdom and raise glory and thanks to you forever. Amen. Kodishan Jesus lies in a manger, though he is the Lord of all. Angels join earth in wonder at the Son of God made man. Praise to you, born of Mary, hidden one who came to save. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. But of Lord, of Lord. Glory to the Lord, and Paul, and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and your children forever. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised previously through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel about his son descended from David according to the flesh, but established as the Son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness through the resurrection from the dead of Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, we have received the grace of apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the Gentiles, among whom you are also, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all the beloved of God in Rome called to be holy. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I give thanks to my God, through Jesus Christ, for all of you, because your faith is heralded throughout the world. God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in proclaiming the gospel of his Son, that I remember you constantly, always asking in my prayers that somehow by God's will, I may la at last find my way clear to come to you. For I long to see you, 
that I may share with you some spiritual gift that you may be strengthened. That is, that you and I may mutually be encouraged by one another's faith, yours and mine. Praise be to God always. Alleluia. of the gospel of our Saviour announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Matthew, who proclaim life unto the world. Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle Matthew writes, The book of the origins of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob. Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Judah begot Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez begot Hezron, Hezron begot Ram. Ram begot Aminadab. Aninab, Aminadab begot Nashon. Nashon begot Salmon. Salmon begot Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed begot Jesse, Jesse begot David, the king. David begot Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon begot Rehoboam. Rehoboam begot Abia. Abia begot Asaph. Asaph begot Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat begot Yoram the mother, the father of Uzziah. Uzziah begot Yotam. Yotam begot Ahaz. Ahaz begot Hezekiah. Hezekiah begot Manasseh. Manasseh begot Amos. Amos begot Yosia. Yosia begot the father, begot Jokenia, and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Yekonia begot Shealtiel. Shealtiel begot Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel begot Abiud. Abiud begot Eliakim. Eliakim begot Azor. Azor begot Zadok, Zadok begot Achim, 
Achim begat Eliud. Eliud begat Eliazar. Eliazar begat Matan. Matan begat Jacob. Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Thus, the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Messiah, 14 generations. This is the truth, peace be with you. The Book of Origins of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. As you well know in the Sacred Rose, the Holy Mysteries, what we call the Sacraments, they are, have an element which is perceivable, audible, visual, tangible, you can touch them, they're palpable. But within them are the grace and the hand of God. And God works within the sacred rose. Most profoundly, obviously, in the divine mysteries, not only is God's action and grace and, and God's sanctification present within the sacraments, but in the Eucharist, of course, God himself is present substantially. Now we bring this up, this contrast between the divine and the visual, the divine and the human that we have, pouring water, anointing with oil, water, uh, wine, bread, these things are present. This is the meaning of this first chapter of St. Matthew. Remember, we talked, we considered last week, that if the scriptures are written for believers, they're not written for unbelievers. They're written for people who already have the faith. They're the ones who are going to hear this being read. If you weren't in the church throughout the first centuries, you never would have had a book in front of you to read. You would have heard the Gospels. And what St. Matthew is doing, since St. Matthew's Gospel is the oldest, traditionally, the Father is considered to be the first one written, written about six years after our Lord's ascension. So we're talking about the year 38, 39. And these believers that are listening, this is also the most Jewish Gospel. It is filled with all of the prophecies, those famous phrases, and this was done so that this would be fulfilled, and then you're given a citation from the old law, from a prophecy. This importance is the people then who are hearing this gospel already believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. We considered that last week. But also that he is son of David. So we've considered the back to front of these two weeks because we're actually reading, secondly, the first part of chapter one today and read the second part of chapter one last Sunday. But they're explaining the two things, how this, this Messiah born of a virgin is the son of David, and the connection of this descent. And that's why the translation of the first line of this gospel, I mean, here what we had today, it says of the genealogy, but it's more, genealogy is just a listing. St. Matthew is much more concerned about the origin, from what comes the Messiah because clearly you already know he's the son of God. So we know he comes from God, that's one aspect. But he is son of David, and so also there has to be a human aspect, God and man, that we already believe. But St. Saint Saint Matthew is just elaborating and pulling out. So then you have the genealogy. <clears throat> there are two genealogies in the New Testament. And at various points they are rather different. 
And there have been commentaries on them throughout the centuries. I allow you, if you're interested, go and read about the parsing of names and putting names together. But ultimately, it's not really the importance. The importance in the Gospel of St. Luke, where the other genealogy is, is it's traced backwards. It's traced from our Lord back to Adam. You'll notice that today's genealogy, the listing, is from Abraham on. Because again, being the Jewish gospel, the people who are listening to it, they're more concerned about the fulfillment of the promises made to Abraham. And so the genealogy in St. Matthew goes back to Abraham. But St. Luke, re writing for a large part a non-Jewish church, he's more concerned to bring out the fact that this is the Messiah for all the nations of the earth. This is the savior of the world. And therefore his genealogy goes back to Adam, the father of all mankind. And so they're slightly different. And what St. Matthew is also doing, not just simply showing that this is the fulfillment of the promises, he has a stylized breakdown, this kind of unusual declaration at the end of this first part of the chapter. So therefore there are 14 generations here, 14 generations and 14 generations. Well, actually it's stylized, needless to say. You didn't come up with exactly mathematically 14 men. There are some names missing. But he wants the 14, and that you can go into the whole thing on numerology and numbers. But what he wants to show is that from Abraham, the fulfillment of the patriarchs, you have 14 generations, the period of the fathers that we call patriarchs. Then you have the royal Davidic line from David to the Babylonian captivity. And that importance, of course, the whole first chapter is about how this Messiah born of a virgin is the son of David, which is a messianic title. So the middle part also stylized in generations. We have from David to the Babylonian captivity. Then he will put 14 generations from the Babylonian captivity until Joseph. And what is actually kind of an interesting thing to note is this last listing of, of fathers from the captivity to the birth of Joseph and the birth of Jesus is that it must be in large part based upon archives of the family because these names are not even included in the Old Testament because of course the Davidic line as far as a monarchy goes is gone. So no one's officially keeping a line. So these names of Abiud and all the rest of them have to be from a family archive, keeping a tracing. So that's the meaning of why we read these names over and over again, year after year. So and so begot so and so. And the terminology is not was just father of. It is the question of origins, correct? And therefore, from this man originated this man. And this man from whom originated then this man. And you're making a connection to show that as the work that goes in in the preparation of the wheat, of the flour, of the baking of the bread for the Holy Eucharist, so this 2,000 year long year, this 2,000 year long descent to have this child born as Messiah, it is the same preparation, like the pressing of grapes and the production of wine for the Eucharist. So you have this 2,000 year period is why this is the book of origins of Jesus the Christ as Messiah, how they're coupled together. Its great meaning has that connection of St. Joseph then being the one who is that last product of these origins who then should have the naming of this Messiah. So if you go back and read the first chapter, then you link together what was last week and this week. And the great importance, of course, is we're not celebrating genealogies. We're celebrating the Messiah, which is why you notice all the hymns are really already Christmas hymns. All about the coming, the wheels of fire, all of the seraphim, all of this aspect. Because the genealogy is always recounted because it is the visible aspect of who is the divine one who enters among us. And so it has these connections between this different lineage and all of that. And that's probably enough you need today at nine o'clock to be considering.
At 11, we'll talk about the Ancient of Days. Last night, we did Ancient of Days. I'm afraid that as I get older, and there is more things that you've read and contemplated and studied, there's always so many more things to say, but we'd always be here for the whole day if we did this. And so, sadly, in the last couple of years, every single sermon actually becomes quite different between the vigil mass to Sunday morning at nine and Sunday morning at 11. That's just giving you a heads up that 11 o'clock we'll talk about the Ancient of Days, which you wind up seeing this title come up several times in the Husoyo, in your, attention, in your attentiveness. But we ask this day on the great mystery of the Hidden One, who reveals himself not just by his own divine will, but through the agency of man. These men all chose to be fathers of children. And in that genealogy, God works and collaborates with all those lineages of these families in order to have the point that in that moment in which God becomes man, you have the collaboration over 2,000 years of mankind bringing forth that child from the womb of Mary by God's choice bringing forth the one who is both God and man, worshiped and seen as a baby and adored as the Ancient of Days. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Almighty Lord in God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept the offerings that your children have brought to you, honor their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Athanodorus. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. and everlasting peace to your children here before you. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and souls and with a holy kiss worthy of your blessed name that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to God.
bow before your majesty, send us your grace and glorious blessings from the heights of your heavenly sanctuary, that we may glorify you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, you sent your beloved Son at the appointed time for our salvation. And he gave us these holy and life-giving mysteries. Do not look upon us as strangers, and do not turn your holy face away from us because of our many sins. For you alone are the Holy One, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Father, in the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. It is right and just to praise you, O Lord of all in heaven and on earth. The powers on high in the heavens where they dwell glorify you. The fiery ranks exalt you, the cherubim bless you, and the seraphim worship you. They cry out and they proclaim. We await your 
second coming, we implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Christ our God, we remember your plan of salvation, and we implore your goodness. When you come in glory with your holy angels, and all await the reward they deserve, and when you place the sheep to the right, and the goats to the left, do not look upon us as strangers to your household, and do not turn your holy face away from us. Do not let our sins and offenses pierce your holy heart, and do not separate us from you. For we have professed your holy name, and have proclaimed your divinity. Rather treat us according to your promises. Forgive our sins, pardon us, and have mercy upon your inheritance. For this your repentant church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you, and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us, and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Anin morio, anin morio, anin morio, ni te morrojo chayu kodisho, onachen alainu aro korbono ono. May these holy mysteries sanctify the bodies and souls of those who share in them, cleanse their hearts, purify their thoughts, and be a pledge of the heavenly kingdom and new life forever. Lord, we now remember in this sacrifice all the holy churches and the shepherds of the true faith, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops. With them, we remember the priests, the deacons, and all who serve your church. We pray to you, O Lord. For the peace and stability of the whole world, for a blessed and prosperous year, for an abundant harvest, for the sick and the oppressed, for all who call upon your holy name on land, at sea, or in the air, and who profess that you are the true God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, those who have presented the offering of this offering upon this altar, and those who desired to do so but were unable, and grant them their petitions. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We remember all the saints, the fathers, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, Mary, the mother of God, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, and all the righteous and the just. Through their prayers, make us worthy to stand among them. 
We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, in your grace those who have left us and have gone to you from the first Christian disciples to this day. They were signed with the seal of baptism and received the precious body and blood of your Son. They wait for you in your life-giving hope. Raise them up on the last day and in your mercy forgive all their sins. To our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Bring rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be petitions. You taught us through your beloved Son to stand before you and to call upon you with pure souls and clear consciences praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Deliver us, O Lord, from every temptation and from harm of evil, for you have power over all. And we raise glory to you now and forever. Shlomo el Lukulukun. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of it, and receive the blessing of the Lord. O Lord, in your grace and abundant mercy, bless those who bow before you. Make us worthy to share in your life-giving mysteries and to join the assembly of your saints, that with them we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility, 
and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you, to you be glory.
Gracious God and Father, how can we repay you for your goodness and for the salvation we have just, you have just given us? Who can give you the glory you truly deserve in our weakness, that insofar as we are able, we worship, praise, and thank you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo el Kulukhudna. Jesus Christ, our God, we worship, thank, and praise you. We implore your goodness and abundant mercy for the salvation of the whole world, for the protection of the living and eternal rest to the departed, for the feeding of the hungry and the support of the needy, for the visiting of the sick and the consolation of the grieving. Through your grace dwell in them, and by your abundant mercy give them life, by your cross, bless your people and protect your inheritance. Adoration is due to you, to your Father, and to your holy and life-giving Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen.